Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video I'm going to show you how to use a USB stick to flash the bars on your MSI B550 Gaming Plus. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video I'm going to show you how to use the USB flashback method, or M-Flash, or BIOS flashback, whatever you want to call it, on your MSI B550 Gaming Plus. Now this is a relatively straightforward thing to do. There are a few things that you do need to do and make sure you do them correctly. Otherwise it will become very frustrating and you'll get all kinds of errors. Now, first of all, ideally you want a USB stick, preferably around about eight gigabytes in size. Actually, smaller the better. And also if you can, a slightly older USB 2.0 device is preferable if at all possible. But certainly you can use any devices up to an unreasonable about 128 gigs, I believe. They do have to be formatted in the FAT32 format, so do take that into consideration. You will also possibly need to format the USB stick, so if there's any information on it, maybe buy a new one or transfer the information elsewhere. Other things you'll need is a computer to access the internet and also that has USB ports, so you can plug your USB stick in to download and transfer the BIOS onto the USB. You will also need, obviously, the motherboard itself, something to actually put the motherboard on, such as the motherboard box is absolutely fine. You will need a power supply with a 24 pin and also a four or eight pin supplementary EPS connector to attach to your motherboard. But other than that, that is pretty much it. So let's get the, uh, the motherboard on the box. We'll get that side of it ready first of all. And now we need to really start looking at the BIOS itself. So let's head over to the MSI website and we'll download the BIOS and I'll show you how to format the disc and prepare it ready to flash your BIOS. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is to open up a web page, and we wanna to go to the MSI website for this board. So, so just type in B550 Gaming Plus, and you go to the MSI website. Obviously, however you get to it, it's entirely up to you. I always generally do a quick visual check, but although these, most of these boards now look very similar, so. Yep, that's absolutely fine. So this is MPG M550 Gaming Plus. Um, head over to the support tab. And it normally will open up on BIOS straight away. So I'm pretty sure that one that's on the board already is BIOS version 14. And we've got 16, which is the latest one. The AGSA code, etc. And this is the one that supports the SAM technology or resizable bar and enhances GPU performance for Radeon RX. 6000 series, so I'm gonna go with this one, BIOS 15. We'll click on the download button. Then we get an option to download it. Obviously in your browser, it might be slightly different, just choose a location. So I'm gonna choose the desktop to download it to. So whilst that's carrying on, we can minimize this. And there is our zipped file. So what we we'll gonna do is right click and extract all the files. We'll get a new folder. Inside the folder, we've now got our folder and there'll be a BIOS file. Now we actually have to rename this. It probably tell us in the uh, the text document, maybe it will, maybe it won't. No, it doesn't. It didn't actually mention it anywhere else either. So what you want to do is make sure, first of all, go to view, make sure file name extensions and hidden items are enabled. If, when they are, then what we do, double click on there, delete everything that's there, and just type in MSI in uppercase, then a dot, then ROM in uppercase. Once you've done that, click OK. It'll save the file name, it's gonna become unusable, blah, blah, blah. Do you wanna change it? Yes, we do. And there we go, so that is our msi.rom file. So all we need to do now is just to drag that file into the root of the E drive, which is our USB stick. So just drag it over. And now if we look in there, there we go, we've got our ROM file. So that's the only file you need actually on the USB stick. So USB drive, MSI ROM file, make sure it's FAT32 formatted all that kind of usual stuff, and make sure it's msi.rom is the file name. Very important, again, you do the file name extension hidden items, otherwise there'll be another hidden extension there, so it'll still be the old ROM file type things. So it'll be msi.rom dot whatever it was before. So it's very important you do that. So once you're happy with that, you can uh, then remove the drive from the computer. Now I would always say when you put the drive in the computer, don't use the front mounted USB ports, always use the rear ones. Uh, they do work much better and they're directly connected to the motherboard, so limited on data transfer, 
uh, anomalies, that kind of stuff. So yeah, try and use the ones on the back if at all possible, because this is a BIOS, so got to do it properly. Okay, so now we're ready to transfer the uh, the BIOS onto our board. So grab your USB stick, and clearly marked on the back of the board, you'll see there is a section there which is outlined, and that is the one we want to use. So let's go ahead and plug that one in now. And next to that, you'll see is the BIOS flashback button. So that is the one that we'll be using very, very shortly. You can also as well, for those of you that are not sure or have not done this before, actually behind the IO shield just in here, there is actually a red LED which tells you what is going on, how many flashes, the uh, f slow flash, fast flash, etc. So if there's no other visual representation on the board, you can check out the red LED which is tucked in behind here. So the next thing we want to do is to get power to the board. So we're going to have to plug in the power connector for this connector at the top, which is our EPS uh, eight pin connector. You can use a four pin if you want to, but eight pin is fine as well. So you will need to connect that one. And also on this side, we've got our 24 pin main ATX power connector. We'll need that as well also. Now, some of you out there are probably wondering this already. I can feel it brewing in the questions and comments section. Mike, I've already installed my processor. I've already installed my RAM, whatever it is. Is it okay to do it? Now, the honest answer is, it's up to you. It's your equipment. I'm doing it purely in this way. This is how MSI have kind of said, this is how it should be done. You don't have to follow it to the letter, not for all of it. When it comes to actually hardware installed, I would say the chances of it working successfully are heightened by not having things on the board. If you do have things on the board, such as your processor, maybe you've got an AIO cooler, which is attached and you've got no other thermal paste, etc., then I can understand that. In which case I would suggest take out any of the main bootable components. So if you've got RAM, remove your RAM, that would prevent the system from booting. Also, if you've got any M.2 drives connected, possibly take those out. It's SATA drives obviously disconnect the SATA connectors. So anything which is really simple to do to remove, I would suggest removing it. Graphics card as well, possibly. Again, depending on the complexity of your build, you may or may not want to do that. But essentially, taking out the RAM should be enough to cause the system to be in such a state that it's unable to boot. So that would be my uh, suggestions and yeah. Do it this way if you can. If you can, just try and limit what is actually bootable on the motherboard. So power connections next. So let's go with the eight pin first of all. So this is our normal eight pin connector, which is two four pins put together. So we're just gonna cut that into the top there, make sure it pushes into place. And the next one is gonna be our 24 pin connector. So we go ahead and put that into the main ATX connection. Make sure it's all fitted in snugly. That is essentially it, that is all we need. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna get the camera to zoom in slightly more so we can see what's going on on the back here. And actually, let's get it started. So normally what you do, actually, make sure you turn on your power supply, very important. So power supply is on. This particular board, for some reason, the normally when you turn the power on to these boards, even if they're not booted, Normally the uh, RGB around the Gaming Edge or Gaming Plus logo would illuminate to give you an idea that it's actually on. But for some reason this board doesn't do it. It's very odd, but yeah. Anyway, so let's uh, find something to press this in. Mike's unboxing pen to the rescue. So he's gonna press and hold the, the uh, flashback button for about two seconds, count of two should be fine. So one, two, and release. That should be all you need. So currently at the back, the flashing logo, or the flashing red LED rather. And you can see now the board is kind of sprung into life. So we've got an LED on this top section, which you can see at the top there, just highlighted next to the ATX power connector. Also as well, what we've got at the same time is the fan actually on the PSU has kicked in now. So that's a great sign. And currently if I actually turn this around a little bit, if I can without destroying anything, there you go, you can see on the side there, we've got that flashing LED. Now what we're waiting for is for that flashing LED to actually change speed. Now, I may have already done it and I may have actually missed it already, but we'll see, it shouldn't have done it quite yet. So we'll carry on watching that LED and uh, see what happens there. It's got two speeds, one is for read, one is for write. So it should either pick up or slow down. If it's got to the very end, then you'll see that the power supply will it'll power cycle, so the fan will spin down and your diagnostic D-LEDs, which I can get those in as well, into the shot, there we go. So the diagnostic D-LEDs, you'll find those briefly turn off and turn back on again. So at the moment, it's just a, a case of sit and wait, unfortunately.
So there we go, you probably, uh, if you blinked, you'd have missed it. So the power supply spun down and the motherboard started going through the post. The red light over here on the boss flash actually just turned off. And also, see the power supply fan, you could see briefly spun down and spun back up again. We're currently in a situation where we've got the CPU debug LED on, uh, which if I tilt that, you can just about see. So the CPU debug light is on. And that is essentially it, that is the done. I didn't see it change speed, so it must have done it before I actually turned the camera around onto it. So it started reading it pretty darn fast, which uh, yeah, is great. So that's actually worked. What I can do now is I can put the processor back on or put the rest of the system back together and it'll be absolutely fine. At this point, because it's actually still running, a lot of you are asking, Mike, when do I turn it off? What's the best thing to do? So I just unplug your USB stick, it's absolutely fine. You'll probably find once you take it out, it actually feels cold because it's stopped transferring data for a while, so there's no heat to this at all. Whereas when I took it out of the PC, it was a lot hotter. So that's one good sign to see that it's actually cool when you take it out, it means it's, it's finished, it's not doing anything. So just turn off the power supply and the system will power down. Then you can just disconnect all your cables. So you can take off your main power, which this one's always gets a bit stuck. Take off our supplementary EPS connector from the top there. And that is it, then you're ready to either test your board, put a processor on, whatever it is you need to do. Okay, so there we go, that is the uh, the BIOS flashed, everything is A-OK, -okay and uh, heart rate can start going down a little bit now. So if this video has been helpful to you, don't forget to smash that like button, and also don't forget to let us know in the comments. If this has helped and has allowed you to flash your BIOS, tell us about it in the comment section. We always love to hear your stories. Also, conversely, if you get any issues and you're not kind of sure, or there's something which you feel I could have elaborated on a little bit more, please let us know in the comments. Your uh, your feedback is always very welcome. And also if you want a little bit more hand-holding, a little bit more one-to-one, -one, then you can always join our Discord chat and uh, we can do our best to help you out there. So that is going to pretty much wrap this one up. Our boss is flashed, ready for our new shiny new processor, and uh, yeah, everything is A-OK. -okay. So this has been how to flash the USB BIOS on your MSI B550 Gaming Plus motherboard. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.